So Jennifer and Liz, yeah, welcome. Thanks a lot. So, so why do families have to stay at home if their kids are not likely to get sick, if they're resilient? Well, physical distancing is really the best way that we have to prevent the spread of the coronavirus in our community. We're trying to flatten the curve of illness. You might have heard that term before. And that is really trying to keep it so that we don't have our healthcare system overwhelmed with critically ill people. If our hospitals and healthcare system get overwhelmed, not only does that mean that people with the coronavirus might die needlessly, but there might not be care for other emergencies that happen over the course of time, like serious illnesses and injuries that are kind of part of our everyday lives, asthma attacks, heart attacks, motor vehicle accidents. Although the coronavirus is most dangerous for seniors and people with underlying health conditions, that doesn't mean that children can't still get sick and they certainly can be spreading the disease. We also wanna protect people who are pregnant. We don't know a whole lot right now about the effects on pregnancy because the disease is new and pregnancy takes nine months to, <laughs> to yield the product of pregnancy, but um, we don't wanna take unnecessary risks when there's such high stakes as pregnancy. And if you're pregnant or if you're breastfeeding right now and you find out that you have coronavirus, please talk with your healthcare provider about whether that's something that you should continue doing or not. I have sort of a random note here too, but one thing that um, people might be thinking about is if they are parenting with two different households, kids are going back and forth. We just wanna clarify that although the stay healthy, stay at home order is really asking people to stay within their own households, if people have a parenting plan that has children living back and forth between parents, that is still an acceptable thing. The governor has clarified that. Okay. Liz, if, if I'm a parent and I'm starting to feel isolated mm -hmm. to, the, to the degree that it's creating anxiety or depression, what, what remedies are there? Yeah, well, loneliness is not, uh, and isolation has not just been created with this more recent pandemic. Loneliness has been an ongoing um, really crisis in our culture for, for a period of time now. And I really think that we are going to need to get pretty creative right now. I'm already so impressed with the stories that I'm hearing from families about how quickly they've adapted in really creative ways to such um, unusual circumstances and non-normal circumstances we find ourselves in. And really, um, I, I think one of the things that we know is that face-to-face -face from afar is much better than um, sending a text message. Um, really, we are wired um, from when we are born as babies to connect with people. And you know, a baby's first language is, is really their skin and learning how to um, know their world. They come into the world with their eyes wide open to connect. So we know how important this is and we know that we need to continue to find creative ways to do this. So we, um, you know, there's many, many options available to people that now through media and things through face to FaceTime and things and we just encourage people to use these to reach out and do face to face communication also just to really focus on the relationships that are around you the ones in your home um, life is so busy for modern Americans and um, there is a strange gift here of some slowness of time and I, I want to also acknowledge people are are trying to work from home and manage children. So I know there's a lot, I'm not, um, I see that as well. But there, um, in some ways, the, the clutter of life has been really diminished and we have been left with just the ability to be more present to the people around us. So Liz, are there some specific strategies that you'd recommend for parents managing, um, I, I guess, the sense of spirit during mm -hmm. these situations? Yeah. Yeah, Jennifer did a lovely job talking about the body, but as we know, we're holistic people. That means we are, we are more than just our bodies, but we have a mind and a spirit. And, and really, um, we want to talk about nurturing some of those, some of the, those parts of ourselves as well. Um, there's many ways to do this, and the good news is they're almost all free. And so this is also very unique to each individual person. So really asking yourself the question of, what refreshes me, what restores me and rejuvenates me and allows me to continue um, having energy that I need in the day. And of course, we're wrapping this back to, as parents, we have to have what we need in order to be able to give to our children. And a lot of these things with um, spirit and rejuvenating um, 
really are things we can do with our kids too. We know that nature and being in nature is, is uh, an incredibly restorative experience for a lot of us. And that's still something that we can participate in, even in the most simple way, even going in your backyard and, and looking for things with your children or watching the moon rise. The moon has been beautiful lately. Um, watching a sunrise with your children or a sunset. Those simple things that we know um, really both create a connection between you and your child and also work to restore um, and energize. I also think about ways that we as a family and as parents can think about small contributions that we can make. Um, it's really easy when we're afraid and anxious to forget that really what we give really rejuvenates as well. And this can be so small. I just had a neighbor this week just deliver smoked salmon to my doorstep. And um, it was the most incredible small act of kindness that meant the most to us as a family. And I, I'd encourage all of us as, as parents right now to model this for our children that even in difficult situations, especially in difficult situations, this can really mitigate stress by thinking of ways you can give right now. And those can be such simple, small things. Um, and we've already talked a lot about connection, but it's because it's so important. So really continuing um, to make connections and to check in on neighbors. Obviously, we need to keep our social distance, but there's creative ways you can do that just to continue to build a community around you in this time as well. Jennifer, what age group are you primarily referring to um, as, as far as managing kids? I think most of the things we're sharing today are for families with younger kids, not necessarily um, teenagers, adolescents, but really from infancy up through maybe early elementary years. Okay, great, thanks. Um, can I talk to you about cabin fever? What, what, what do you recommend as far as, uh, is the word manage, managing your kids during this time, entertaining them? Well, the really cool thing is I've been amazed at the proliferation of good ideas that are out there. And Liz did talk about you know outdoor activity and we talked about that for your body and your mind and spirit. But also there are a lot of things that are kind of screen focused that you can go visit a museum, a zoo, an aquarium from all around the world. There's all kinds of things that have been made available. There's really cool animal cams I heard something about a naked mole rat that you could be watching on an animal camera, or pandas or penguins, or you could find all kinds of exotic and interesting animals in their habitats or at zoos to watch. Um, Skagit Kid Insider is a local resource that's really amazing, and if you go onto that website, you can find a daily schedule of things. There's story times, there's sing-alongs, there's arts and crafts sorts of things, there's PE with Joe, there's something I saw called the Sofa Singers, um, Lunch Doodles with Mo Willems. You can learn to draw cartoons. I think that this is a time where people can really expand their um, interests and their creativity. And you can do that together with your children or you can do it by um, setting them up with that. There's also a really amazing app that's really intended for children birth to five years old called Vroom, V-R-O-O-M. And we're trying to promote that in the community and it gives you all kinds of tips and ideas for things that you can do with your kids. One of the suggestions I heard earlier today was that you can take a picture of something in your house, an object, and then hide it and then show your child the picture and then tell them to go find it and keep them occupied for a while at home. That's great. Thanks, um, Liz. Thanks, Jennifer, for, for sharing all this information. There's a lot of questions, but it's good to hear that there's a lot of resources out there as well. Thanks so much.